Hello writers, my name is Bill Womack and this is a quick tutorial about easy, fast, and efficient manuscript formatting in Microsoft Word. What you see before you is the scariest sight any writer will ever have to face, a blank Word document. To get started, I'm going to type in a quick title for my novel, chapter heading, and paste in some text. and there we have it. This is going to be the basis for everything I show you today. Okay, we've sullied a clean page with some text. What you see now is how the paragraphs look by default in Word. At this point, you might feel compelled to highlight the text, go up to the font selector, and change it to manuscript format. Fight that urge. Instead, we'll organize the document's structure and ignore its look for a moment. The idea here is that a cleanly structured document is a snap to format. Once we've structured it, we can alter the format anytime we like. I'll even show you a technique for navigating long manuscripts, a novel for instance, using the structure we're about to define. To begin structuring the doc, go to the Format menu and choose Styles and Formatting. This will open the Formatting sidebar. Users of Word 2008 may have to go hunting for this option, but it's still there. What you see is a list of available formatting for this document. Just about anything we'll need to do to a manuscript can be done with these four simple items. Heading 1, Heading 2, Heading 3, and the normal or standard paragraph format. We're going to use the headings to create a hierarchy for our novel. Let's choose the title of the novel and tag it as Heading 1. Then we'll click on the chapter title and tag it as Heading 2. And then finally, we'll click on the first paragraph of our scene and tag it as Heading 3. The rest of the paragraphs in the scene are automatically tagged as normal, so we won't need to do anything to them for now. And that's about all there is to structuring. We've gone from having four undifferentiated paragraphs to an admittedly odd-looking but organized manuscript. Now we come to the part where setting up all the structure really shines in terms of setting the style. Let's say we want this manuscript to be in 12-point Courier instead of the Times New Roman that it's in now. Instead of changing the text size or the text style over in our document, we're going to redefine the style itself. So roll over Normal, choose the little arrow to the right, and click Modify. This brings up the Modify Style panel, which is really the heart of all of our formatting. We're going to go down to the Format button, and we're going to choose Font. From there, I'm going to scroll up and find Courier New, make it 12 point regular, and hit OK. I also want to have it double spaced instead of single, so I'll go back to my Format button and choose Paragraph. I'm going to indent the first line by half an inch, set my line spacing to double, and hit OK. Then OK again to get back to our document. What you see is that all the styles that were based on normal which is all three of the headings, have taken on some of the properties of the normal style. But here you see that our normal, or our regular paragraphs, have now changed to courier, 12 point, and double spaced. And they have that lovely indent at the beginning. We're also going to choose heading 3, which is the scene heading for each of our scenes. We're going to choose modify for it, format font, going to make it courier new as well also 12 point and regular. Okay. And in a format for the paragraph, we want to not have the first line indented for our scene headers. But we do still want our double spacing. Hit OK and OK again. And you see that our scene now leads with no indentation. And every subsequent paragraph does have it. One more quick change I want to make is I want to have my scene headings actually have a little extra space at the top of each of them so that I can tell where one scene ends and the next begins. So I'm going to go back to my heading 3, I'm going to modify it, go to Format Paragraph, and I'm going to choose, make it something extreme, like 42 point spacing before each scene heading paragraph. OK, OK, and you see that the scene has dropped down, opened up some more room between it and the chapter heading. Let's do a quick chapter heading change as well. Modify our chapter heading to use 
good old courier new. Also regular, also 12 point. Okay, and we're going to center our chapter headings. We just click the centering here. Oh, and we also want to go into our paragraph and not indent our first line. Okay, and okay. And you see now, chapter one looks a little more like it should for a manuscript, centered at the top of the chapter. And just for fun, we'll do a quickie change on the heading one as well. Uh, let's also make it not indented. Double spaced, and we'll do the same thing to the font. We'll, uh, what am I doing? Set it for Courier New. Okay. Now, more work is probably required for that uh, front page for the novel. We're going to leave that be for now. I'm just using the, the title here to show you how to navigate later on in the tutorial. Okay, so that's about all there is to formatting your document. Uh, let me show you a little bit of the flexibility that's involved in defining these styles rather than putting the formatting directly into the document. Let's say we wanted to change our font. We have a, perhaps a, a publisher or an agent who wants to see a different font, or we'd just like to have a different look for our work. Let's go to the normal style. Let's edit it. I'm going to modify it. And I'll choose, I'll choose Palatino Linotype. And just like that, by changing one setting here, the entire document, and bear in mind this could be as long as three, four hundred pages or more, has just changed to a different font. And because all of our headings were based on normal, when I changed the font for normal, it rippled up and changed everything, including my chapter headings, my scene headings, and even the title of the novel. And the wonders of a properly structured document don't stop there. Uh, one of the other neat things about it is the ability to navigate within a document. Uh, as I said, this could be hundreds of pages long. How do you find an individual chapter or an individual scene? Well, you could use the search function, which is a little cumbersome but does indeed work. Or you can make use of a really neat feature called the document map. Because we have this structured with our headings, we can go up here to the little icon that looks like a document with a magnifying glass and click on it. I'll close up my styles and formatting to get it out of the way. And look at that. An outline for my entire novel has shown up over here on the left. This is the map of my document, and it's not just a table of contents, it's clickable. So I can click to my chapter headings and jump through my document to any chapter I like, and even onto the scenes to jump to the front of each scene. So even if your scenes looked exactly the same, your scene headings, as your other paragraphs did, setting them up as a heading three means they always show up under your chapters here and are navigable. Extremely useful if you have a long document and you need to find your way through it. If you don't have your copy of Word set up to show the document map button by default, you can also access it up here through the view menu and choose document map. And that's about all there is to it. In this tutorial you've learned how to set up your document, how to properly structure it, using paragraphs and headings, how to redefine those paragraphs and headings to give you the format that you want, and even how to navigate long complex documents using your structure in conjunction with the document map. For more of my musings on writing and the writing life, visit my blog at www.wordsforwriters.com. Happy writing!